Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play The Outer Worlds, where last time, well, let's start off with this first of all. This is a, a re-recording. I once again have messed up my recording of the uh, original video. So this episode will be me redoing some things that I've already already seen. So disclaimer out of the way, uh, let's jump into the episode. Where last time we finished Eridanos, where we uh, killed the Slug Queen and defeated, uh, well, I guess we didn't defeat Ludovico, but uh, we definitely saw his defeat. And uh, we made our way here to Gorgon, where we found Wilhelm Wilhelmina Ambrose. He wants us to uh, recover her mother's journal from the research facility on Gorgon proper, proper which is that asteroid right there. Uh, and that's what she hired Lucky Montoya to do, but Lucky Montoya is, well, missing an arm, at the very least. Possibly his entire life. We will see. But that's what she wanted us to do, so we have a couple of things to do. We have one thing still to do here on this planet that I, uh, discovered. So let's go ahead and make our way out here. And uh, a lot of this episode was just me kind of exploring and enjoying the ambiance of, of Gorgon. Like, I really like uh, the the sound effects and in, in the music going on out here. I mean, it just, it's very atmospheric. I like it a lot. So a lot of it was me just stumbling around enjoying it. Responses. Listening to her now, drinks the butler here. And just doing a little bit of exploring. So we'll probably get further than we did before in my original recording. So that's one good thing. We don't really need all that crap. All right, the kitchen key card is in here. And the groundskeeper, groundskeeper's journal, volume one. Daily routine. Sweep the tranquility garden for Miss, Mrs. Olivia. Oil the fish for Mr. Harvey. Repeat. When they hired me on as groundskeeper, I assumed that there'd be grounds to keep. I'm not even allowed inside the manor. Everyone told me the Ambrose family keeps to themselves, but they're a bunch of hermits, save for the little one. Guess I ought to find a hobby. Mr. Harvey dropped his key card in the pond. I'll hold on to it in case he ever comes looking, but I won't go near the house. Wouldn't want to go get between Mrs. Olivia and her research. Yeah, we're, we learn a lot about uh, Miss Olivia. She's quite the workaholic. No, you're upside... Oh, actually, you're sideways. You're not upside down. Poor Drinks a lot. I don't think that's his name. Drinks the butler. I'm gonna call him Drinks a lot, though. He deserves better than that. But I can't pick him up as far as I, as far as I know. Hey, your buddy out there is uh, in trouble. In case you were curious. And so we go into the kitchen. I don't believe there's anything of value in the kitchen. It's just a bunch of food and drinks. But what we do have is this over here. A little secret passage. Service tunnels? I don't really know what this is for. We can sneak into the office here. Of Virginia Yang, girl detective, where the old fella dies and his nurse inherits his house. <gasps> what if we find a body? Oh, Parvati. Yeah, we found a little office here. Uh, nothing in there we need. Magpick, Adreno, some energy cells. Oh, yeah, we had the uh, this okay, super on. large scale or scale skull. And then the normal looking skull. Except it's all, you know, glossy. And there is this thing here too, which is like... I don't know. It's like numbers all over the top of the head. It's weird. Let's go and log in here. Ambrose O. Welcome, user Ambrose O. Logs. Date, February 1st, 2324. I always forget what year is it in game right now. I really should try and remember when that is. Uh, February 1st, 2324. 
This morning, I gave birth to a healthy child. Perhaps that's a strange distinction, to call her healthy, but after all I've endured to finally meet her, it matters. That she exists at all, against the odds, matters. We'll call her Velhima, Vel, Velhelmina. It's a terrible name. <laughs> I'm sorry if your name is that, but... Or maybe I just you know, can't pronounce it well, but yeah. After my late brother, Wilhelm. Maybe I should pronounce it Wilhelm instead of Wilhelm. I don't know. I hope the law is kinder to her than it was to him. I hope for many things, truthfully. That she'd be smart and shrewd. That she'd be strong, relentless, undeniable. Most of all, I hope for her a steel spine. That she does not bend when Halcyon would break her. That she should be stronger than I. Yeah, so for this first lock, we kind of get the sense that Olivia's... You know, she really does care about her daughter, right? She wants her daughter to be successful in life and be strong enough not to be a corporate drone, essentially. Date, March 17th, 2324. This is about a month later. A month and a half later. I must find Minnie, a wet nurse. See, even they give her a nickname, like, right away. I must find Minnie a wet nurse. She demands to be fed throughout the day and night, and I simply cannot be get a single thing done. The nurse will need to be exceptional, smart, educated, of means. Minnie must have the best start if she's going to survive the Pit of Vipers, that is, the Byzantium elite. Then there is this, the matter of a governess. I can't watch the child const constantly, not if I'm to do my work. How soon must I begin looking? Naturally, she'll have to be exceptional as well, and exceptional Byzantine Byzantines don't exactly grow on trees. I will persuade Harvey to investigate this for me. The man has little else to do. Yeah, so very matriarch society in this household, it seems like. Uh, date November 22nd, 2329. So five years later. I don't understand how anyone of ambition has time to keep a journal. I certainly don't. Yet here I am, indulging myself. Minnie's influence, no doubt. Her behavior concerns me. She's clingy, emotional. At five, she, she should be starting to show some personality, not crying for her mother when I leave for another stint on Gorgon. This might this must be the fault of Mary, her governess, as many certainly didn't learn this behavior from me. I'll have to fire the woman. It's clear she's not capable of instilling in many a correct understanding of how to behave. Harvey despairs of even finding a governess who meets my preposterous standards. He and I went in circles on the issue for hours, but he came around to my thinking eventually. Why shouldn't I want what's best for my daughter? Maybe I'll fire him too. Date, June 5th, 2337. So, Minnie is 13 at this stage? I'm at my wit's end with Minnie. At 13, she should she should have already mastered basic chemistry, physics, and mathematics, but she can barely handle long division. She struggles to remember the simplest equations and formulas, no matter how many times her governess wraps her knuckles. By the time I was her age, I'd already made dynamite in my grandfather's laboratory. The only thing Minnie's... Minnie's making explode is my head. Her father asked me why we don't just send her to boarding school, but I abhor the thought of her surrounded by those coddled idiots. More alarming still, she's begun to show an interest in romance serials and painting. She may have a strong grasp on color of color theory, and she shows some promise with watercolors, but surely that's the result of her education in spectros spectroscopy. Not any innate skill. What value has art, anyway? She gave me a truly dreadful painting of Francis this morning, and I haven't a clue what to do with it. Perhaps I'll stuff it in my desk. We'll have a good laugh over it when she's grown and finally comes to, when she's grown and finally comes to her senses. Date April twenty eighth, twenty three forty eight. So twenty four. Lucian appears at the manor this morning. I thought him I thought I'm here for me to finally wring my neck after our latest tiff, but no, it was much worse than that. He'd come to speak to Minnie. No need to guess why. She's taken it upon herself to manage the household these last few years, since neither her father nor I have the time, or frankly, inclination. Under her watch, the staff's productivity has increased 35%, while reducing our costs an astonishing 67%. We've saved tens of thousands of bits. Harvey tipped Lucy off, I expect. Now he wants to bring her on to help manage the Gorgon facilities. Which I refused over Minnie's uh, 
vociferous protestations, protestations. She cried after he'd left. I only wish that I could tell her why. Yeah, so apparently it seems like she does not agree. She's obviously not a fan of the corporation that she's working for or Byzantium in general, right? She thinks they are... I don't know really what she thinks of them, but uh, she, she doesn't like them. She doesn't want many to be part of them. And doesn't want her part of the research. So something down there is important for her. Important, important enough that she wants to work on it, but is potentially dangerous. Dangerous enough that she doesn't want many down there. The search continues. I take from the... This is from uh, uh, Minnie here. This message. I take from these entries that Mother was severe with her editorial pen. This is but one version of her carefully curated and not the one... This is but one version of her carefully curated and not the one I wanted to find. Where is her un un unvarnished stream of consciousness? Where is her spontaneous brilliance? The search continues. My efforts will inevitably steer me to Gorgon. What then, Minnie? What then? Okay. So yeah, that, that gave, gave us a... A little bit more insight into Olivia. And what she was like as a, as a person. She was apparent... She apparently had a very high uh, regard for her own abilities. And wanted the same for... Minnie. But now we are headed to Gorgon proper, where we uh, will hopefully find some more information about what the hell is going on here. Let's get to the ship. You okay there, drinks a lot? I am concerned for you, buddy. Poor guy. Okay. Hey, Ada. Bring us in the Gorgon. The landing pad. Thank you. And are we going to bring the same group? For Gorgon? I mean, we haven't really brought Max along very much. Let's bring Max in and, and Parvati. I feel like we haven't brought Max as, as, along as much as all the other ones. I really like that description of, of the stars. I guess you really wasn't describing or the feeling that the stars give you. I do enjoy a good stargazing. Okay, we got an alarm going on here. Check this place out. This is really cool. There's a Sprat Shack over there. And we can turn this off. Let's go ahead and do that. Because that alarm would get annoying after a while. The elevator is broke. Let's head on down. Hey, little Sprat. Who's a good Sprat? Be leading me to the Sprat Shack. I might actually be leading me to the Sprat Shack. Uh, there's some vending machines there. They don't have anything in them, though. Or not anything useful, anyway. Okay, let's keep moving. There is a shop over here. Which we, uh, we do some... I'm gonna do some buying. He's got a couple things I wanna buy. I got supplies if I need them. No one lasts long on Gorgon unprepared. Is that what my thoughts sound like? Well, I've been standing near that alarm too long. You looking for supply, stranger? Let's stock up here. If you run low on bullets out in Gorgon's far reaches, there ain't no one around here liable to help you out. Let me know if you're looking for something particular. Uh, so this is Gorgon? You mean you came out to this asteroid without knowing nothing about it? <laughs> me too. 
<laughs> Heard it was wild here and couldn't resist. Trouble is, if you wander off to somewhere you oughtn't be, like way out in Gorgon's farthest reaches, odds are slimmer of your bits finding their way to my pockets. If you want my advice, stick close to the Sprat Shack. Unless you fancy having your limbs torn off and eaten. I do not fancy that at all. I figured not. Look, I ain't stopping you from wandering elsewhere. But if you do, be sure you watch out for the Marauders. That's the number one thing. And the Mance, I guess. You watch out for Marauders, Mance, and Charles from Accounting, and you'll probably be fine. Who's Charles from Accounting? Only the meanest Marauder on Gorgon, and also anywhere else. That man is crazier than a bag of canids and twice as likely to bite. We're gonna have to he fight him. Bust your head open like an overripe mock apple if he so much as sees you. I ain't joking. He'll snap you in half like stale bread noodles. I doubt it, buddy. Do you know who I am? I'm the inspector. Uh, he's welcome to try. Oh, thanks for the warning. No, no, you don't get it. Charles from accounting is like... Imagine if you took three of the most howling mad marauders you could find and mashed them together. That's Charles. Eh, not worried. Pretty sure I've done that before. That ain't right. <laughs> well, I warned you. If you run off and get exploded to death by a madman with a rocket launcher now, that's on you. He's got a rocket launcher now. Sure, okay. He's got a rocket launcher. Is he any good with it? I don't know. Hard to guess how many he's killed, given the explosions tend to obliterate any bodies. <laughs> I'm joking. No one bothers looking for bodies. Why not? I'm starting to wonder if there ain't a person on this rock entirely out of their minds. Look, long story short, you do not fuck with Chuck. Best to avoid the Mirage. Oh, he's got a slogan. Entirely. That's my two bits on the matter. About Charles. Yeah? Uh, where'd you say he was? Where'd you say he was again? The Marauder camp way out to the east. To the east. That's what I heard, at least. And I sure hope you're asking so you can keep a safe distance away. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'll take it that evacuation alarm wasn't urgent. Huh? Oh, you don't gotta worry about that. Something to do with that scrap project Gorgon from years back. Thanks for turning it off, by the way. I'd have lost my mind if the damn thing had gone on much longer. Why didn't someone shut it off? We tried. Couldn't persuade the control terminal to listen. No one around here is particularly mechanically inclined, and no one was going to shut it down by force. That's for sure. I know, because even Von Hoffman couldn't bash it in. And I seen that tough son of a gun throw man clean across the Sprat Shack one time like he were a toss ball. What can you tell me about Project Gorgon? Only that Spacer's Choice shut it down in a big hurry. From what I heard, some of their folks got left behind even. Don't seem like the project ended well. What have you got for sale? Found a pickaxe in the mine like none I've ever seen before. Could be awful useful if you're the violent type. Hmm. The violent type. I'm not violent. Okay, so what we wanted to buy from you. We want to buy this flamethrower. And we want to buy, buy this grenade launcher. I think, uh, do we want to buy uh, maybe a scythe? A melee weapon? What's this? That's oh, just a manti carapace. Uh, no. That's, what, that's all we bought in the previous, or my original recording. That's all we'll buy here. We don't need to repair anything. Uh, we can sell all this stuff. Because we have a ton of bits. And now we're going to go over here. And we're going to... Well, actually, first we're going to equip these things. So the flamethrower is going to replace this. And the grenade launcher is going to replace that. And we want to replace this, too. So let's find a two-handed melee weapon. The best one we can find. Probably this champion toss ball stick. Yeah, we'll use that. Until we find something better. Okay, so now we can break down everything. 
That isn't special. There we go. Uh, go ahead and repair everything. Now we want to modify our grenade launcher. So we're going to go with the critical strike damage here. Or critical damage. It's a cool looking gun. I love I love the... I've said this so many times, but I really love the design of the weapons. Look at that. It looks so cool. I just wish there were more of them. That's really a, the only thing I have to say about that. Uh, what did we get for this? This is the grenade launcher. I think we went with... What did we do with this? Did we go... I think I went with... No, 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 no. I went... Magazine size? Well, I don't remember what we went with, so we're... I went with corrosion. That's what I went with. Yeah, it's a corrosive grenade launcher. I like it. And then our flamethrower. Ah, uh, we took critical damage again. And I made it an in-ray weapon. It's going to be our... We're going to tear through biological creatures. That should be pretty fun. And then for... Which we never modified our light machine gun here. We'll go ahead and put... Uh, this on. Rate of fire. Just to be a little different. That looks really cool. Look at that. And we're going to make this one a shock damage weapon. Yep. Oh, we need to modify our champion stick here. Let's crit chance. Weapon attack speed, durability, or swing noise. Uh, crit chance. What does that look like? Oh, it just changes the, the shaft. And then this part. Look at that looks so cool. Uh we'll make it a plasma weapon, maybe? Let's do power attack damage. Corrosion and electric. We'll make it a plasma weapon. That looks pretty cool. Okay. And I believe that's everything we needed to do here. Let's take a look around here, see if there's anything I missed. So there's an elevator here that works, it looks like. So we can take that instead of the stairs. And then another elevator over here. I believe this takes us up to the Sprat Shack. Yeah, there's the Sprat Shack over there. Sprat Shack is really cool. That's where uh, the episode ended last time. We ended it half, probably halfway exploring the Sprat Shack. So yeah, we're going to get further than the first episode. Like I said, the, uh, the original time I recorded this, I spent a lot of time just kind of staring at the sky and stuff uh, and enjoying the atmosphere of this place. It is really nice. I, I really do like it. Okay. Check electri electricity rationing bill. Employee Tran Dominic currently owes 9,500 bits. And that just reminded me I need to go back to the workbench after we get done here. So shipment history, outgoing shipment, this one. Ship, ship name Perseus, Voyage, Terra 2, Loop E1. Port of Load, Gorgon. Port, port of Discharge, Edgewater. Discharge date, 2350-0114. Cont contents, 2,000 cartons containing redacted, 3 discharged staff, 5 reassigned staff. And the second shipment, Perseus again, Terror 1, Loop SB4, from Gorgon to Stellar Bay, 2344-1130. Contents, 100 cartons containing prototype redacted, 2 tons raw ore of redacted, and 15 reassigned staff. All right, shipment history, incoming shipments. First one, sh vessel name, ethics gradient, voyage, uh, Charybdis, 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 loop G3, 
from Tartarus to Gorgon, 2349-1211. 350 cartons containing 100 units, each sterile injection amp ampules. 30 high-pressure steel cylinders containing oxygen, and 25 volunteers. And the second shipment. Ship name profit margin, Voyage Terra 2 Loop B7, from Byzantium to Gorgon, 2350-0204. Three corporate security squads containing three fire, te fire teams each, 500 rounds of light ammunition, 2,000 rounds of heavy ammunition, and one flat containing th 10 units Moonman Standee. I don't know what Moon Man Standy is. But 2350. Do we have anything that tells us what year it is currently? Can I see that anywhere? I don't think so. There's not like a, a calendar or anything. Okay, so... i to find another workbench. I don't know if there's another one besides... That one? We can hop down there if we need to. What's in here? Oh, it's a locked chest. With some ammo in it. We'll take it. Okay, let's just hop down here. Another broken elevator. Another locked chest. So this is stuff I've never... I haven't gotten to see before. Because we need to tinker our weapons. We haven't really messed with tinkering... time to make our weapons more powerful we have because as far as i know tinkering is just uh you give you give the workbench bits and it makes your weapon stronger and we have almost ninety thousand bits so we have a, a ton of bits to spare here let's go ahead and spend a whole bunch of bits on this i think i'm going to just spend ten thousand bits on each weapon that's good for that. Puts it up 3,500 DPS. Damn. For the grenade launcher. Going to where at 67,000. The cost is exponential here. Oh, this item is max level and cannot be tinkered any further. Oh, I didn't know there was a max level. Interesting. Okay, so the flamethrower. Go ahead and level this up. Does this have a max level too? Okay, it's 16,000 bits for that level. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, so we got some really powerful weapons now. Cool. So I guess the... Uh, what was it that was... It was the grenade launcher that hit max level. And this thing looks awesome. Can't wait to use it. Alright, so let's go into the Sprat house. Or the Sprat shack, my bad. Hello? Come here. Let's have a chat. Alright, inspection time. Look at my eyes for as long as you can without blinking. Starting now. Von Hoffman. Keep looking into his eyes. Good. Look up. Now look down. Look up and down. You're doing swell. Now, name and occupation. Bruce, Captain of the Unreliable. Good enough for me. You're cleared to pass. That was a sanity check. If you had changed like the others, it'd be in your eyes. You'd also be drooling, cursing, and making a mess of the place. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. You can head on downstairs. What did you mean when you said people had changed? Every day, salvagers and scrappers set out to comb the ruins and make their fortune. The ones who come back, they aren't always the same men or women who left. They change. Never for the better. What happens? First, they get real twitchy and paranoid, shouting at folks who aren't there. Then they smell like they soiled themselves on account of how they soiled themselves. Mm. After that, they're gone. Nothing but animals wearing human skin. Seen it happen myself. It's never pretty. 
And where exactly am I? This is the Sprat Shack, the most remote watering hole in the system. Rule number one, no fighting. Rule number two, wipe your feet on the way downstairs. We're the only hospitable place on this rock. I want to keep it that way. That's why we have rule number three. When people change, they stay outside where they belong. Let me ask you something else. Just don't ask me to dance. Aw. What do you do around here? Bouncer, bodyguard, law enforcer. I make sure the Sprat Shack gets only the highest caliber of clientele. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your presence screams high class. We get a lot of brand loyal corporate types and a lot of cutthroat freelancer types. Both sides have their share of dirty scoundrels. And I hate dirt. Me too, buddy. What kinds of people come to... What kinds of people come to the Sprat Shack? This is a sublight bar. So most of our regulars come to plunder the old labs. The facility's locked up behind miles of red tape. So progress is slow. A lot of time to drink and reevaluate. Then venture out and try again. What do you know about Gorgon? Something bad happened here. Spacer's choice was developing chemicals. The kind with nasty side effects. Marauders outnumber the rest of us ten to one. Either they came from Gorgon, or something draws them here. I don't know which is worse. This place is under a dark cloud, stranger. That's all I know. If you want the history of the Sprat Shack, talk to Lex behind the bar. I'll see you around. Watch yourself out there. I'm, I'm, I really enjoy the uh, premise of this. You know, the Sprat Shack being, you know, this haven for uh, uh, salvagers on uh, an abandoned world like this. It's really cool. Ugh. This place smells like Felix's birth. A true den of iniquity. How refreshing. How refreshing indeed. And this brush shack is just really cool. I really like how it's laid out like this. This verticality of the bar. Yeah, so so far I'm a big fan of this DOC. I know I'm only like an hour in. But. Well, I like it. I like it so far a lot. Hey, Lex. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. First one's on the house, and I won't even water it down. What'll it be? Uh, whiskey. I'm feeling refined. Bottoms up. I assume you're here for salvage. Actually, I came for a journal. Uh, not exactly. But you can explain... But can you explain what you mean? Most of my regulars are sublight scavengers. They pick over the ruins of Gorgon, spend their earnings at the bar, and uh, head back out the next day. Vicious cycle. But that's life. You're the first new face I've seen in a while. Do you know anyone by the name of Lucky Montoya? Lucky? Sure, I knew him. He could get a little... dramatic at times, but he was a good guy. Heard he took on a dangerous job. Spent a lot of time coming and going from the Office of Creative Incubation. Just down the road. Office of Creative Incubation? That's where the top rungers at Spacer's Choice came up with slogans of marketing. Lucky never told me why it was so important. <sighs> Awful shame about what happened to him. Mm. Where was, uh, what happened? You really want to hear my story? <laughs> wow, most everyone around here is sick to death of it by now. Last I saw of Lucky was a few days ago. I went outside for a smoke and a stroll, and I saw this wild canid dragging a bloody limb. So I kicked the canid, scared it off. Mm. <laughs> Why not let the canid enjoy the juicy limb? Go on. Get this. The canid was chewing on an honest-to-law human arm. Lucky's arm. Mm, how'd you know it belonged to Lucky? I'm a bartender. Attention to detail is my middle name. Anyway, the arm was clutching a phonograph that mentioned someone named Alex Hawthorne. I did some poking around, and this Hawthorne has a reputation among the, uh, <clears throat> salvagers who frequent the bar. 
So I packaged up the arm nice and tidy and sent it care of the Halcyon Parcel Service. They even gave me a discount on the hazardous waste removal stamp. Hmm. Why bother sending the arm at all? I figured Hawthorne would want to know what happened to his pal. Help Lucky get his affairs in order, you know. Oh, I hate to see people go with unfinished business. The arm made it to me. I'm Hawthorne's next of kin. Sort of. <laughs> no kidding. And now you're here? Colony feels smaller than you'd think some days. I'm glad I was here to see this uh, confluence of events, you know? The stars really aligned on this one. And here I am, smack dab in the middle. Where is Lucky staying? Third floor. Once I figured he wasn't coming back to pay his tab, I left his room unlocked to air it out. You can help yourself to anything you left behind. Fair warning, I've been letting the regulars use it for a quick lie down. Just wash your hands when you're done. Trust me. Thank you for the advice. Uh, so you run this place? Yes and no. The Sprat Shack used to be a shipping and receiving warehouse during the old Project Gorgon days. When Spacer's Choice pulled their guys off world, Sublight moved in to uh, salvage what we could, and they put me in charge. So Sublight owns the Sprat Shack now? Yes and no. Rumor has it there's a Sprat wandering around the Groundbreaker. And he's the legal owner of the Sprat Shack. Hagen's idea. Oh, that Hagen. It sounds perfectly reasonable. I've seen the paperwork. Everything's in order. When I say my boss is a filthy Sprat, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> See, Hagen didn't want a paper trail that led back to her, so she gave the bar to the Sprat. If there were any legal problems with this place, the Sprat would do the time. Most businesses in Halcyon are run by Sprats. <laughs> this is the first I've heard of it being openly acknowledged. You think a Sprat could own Edgewater? Oh, oh, imagine one wearing Mr. Thompson's little hat! <laughs> anyway, that's what the paperwork says. I don't make the rules. Is that arrangement even legal? I know there's paperwork backing it up. You put enough stamps and staples on anything, I'm pretty sure it's legal by default. The beautiful thing is, no one could tell Matt Spratt apart from an ordinary vermin. I think that's kind of the point, to send the authorities on a wild Spratt chase. What happens if F Ethel Geibler turns into, a, into Sprattwurst? Never thought about that. Shit. Someone could have eaten my boss. Indeed. As far as business arrangements go, this one's a head scratcher, but they say it's all above board, so that's what matters. Does Space's Choice mind that you're squatting in their warehouse? Yes and no. We're doing a lot more than squatting. We're classing up the joint, keeping the riffraff outside where it belongs. They didn't even serve drinks until I arrived. <laughs> Talk about wasted potential. Seriously. Uh, can you answer any questions without starting with yes and no? Yes. And no. <laughs> Again, that one was Hagen's idea. She told me that speaking in vague terms keeps you out of trouble. And I don't want any trouble in my place. Makes sense. How do you get supplies in and out? Thirsty people come and go from all over the colony. Mostly on the way to somewhere better. Some are well connected. And not everyone pays with bits. That's how we get the unconventional goods, anyhow. Sublight keeps us well stocked with the essentials, by which I mean booze. Most essential of essentials. Uh, what do you know about Gorgon? Spacer's Choice used to brew pharmaceuticals in these parts. That's why the asteroid smells like an old gym sock. They say Adrena Time came from here, just down the road at the old R&D lab. Very hush-hush back in the day. Do any of your regulars have more information on Gorgon? Roscoe might tell you more. He spent some time around here before the bar opened up. I trust him well enough. There's always Leonora, my favorite customer over in the storage room on the second floor. Keeps to herself and always closes out her tab. What's Roscoe's story? He's been here since opening day. I think he told me he was some kind of journalist. He got left behind when Spacer's Choice pulled out. And I guess no one's coming to get him. Poor bastard. You looking out for him? 
Roscoe's drinks are on the house. We all know how it feels to get left behind. He'll be all right. He's with the family now, and we take care of our own. Why do you get left behind? He didn't tell me, and I didn't ask. I'm his bartender, not his human resources rep. If you believe the chatter, a lot of good folks got left behind, and a lot of bad folks made it out. Sometimes, that's all there is to it. Yeah. We saw that with, um... Oh, what was the place called? Cascadia? Is that it? On uh, Monarch? Where all the uh, head honcho scientists got out, but everybody else got left behind? What can you tell me about Leonora? Nice lady. Been coming around a lot these past few months. She isn't with Sublight, but seems to know the lay of the land better than anyone. She spends most of her days drinking alone. I think she's looking to hire someone. If you're open to a side gig. Do you know if she spoke with Lucky Montoya at all? Now that you mention it, I thought I saw those two sharing stories over a pint. Didn't think twice about it. I don't speak ill of the dead, but Leonora deserves better company. That Lucky was no good for her. Thanks for the uh, tip. What are friends for, eh? Oh, we're friends? Any idea why Spacer's Choice shut Gorgon down? I doubt anyone knows the full story. One day the evacuation order went out. Grunts and lab coats scrambled to get anywhere but Gorgon. And the weirdest thing of all, Adrena time still hit the market. Me, I never touch the stuff. To each their own, but I think it's dangerous. Hmm. Salvagers must be making a fortune off of Gorgon. Damn right we are. We've got drugs, scrap metal, prototype weapons, drugs, money, and more drugs. Rock and roll. When Spacer's Choice evacuated, everyone dropped their gear and ran. Most of it stayed where it fell, and all of it is up for grabs. Of course, the real treasure is whatever's locked up in the old facility. Until someone figures a way to crack it open. We're just sifting through dirt. Well, now that I'm here, it's gonna get cracked open. No further questions. You got it, bub. Bub. How about a drink? Don't forget to close your tab when you're done. Mm-hmm. You have anything, uh, neat? Oh, yeah, she has this. We bought this before. Heavy weapons plus five. Go ahead and buy that. And... That's, uh, this, uh, the sublight uniform. There's also this. Cat's eye pressure helm. Uh, we don't need to buy it, though. Let's go ahead and put our new fancy helm on. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Not as good as your helm. Or your helm. I just realized I have the helmet bros with me. Hey, guys. Alright. Freddy and Trixie. That was my salvage, Trixie. You had no right to it then, and you've no right to it now. Let them talk. I risked my life sneaking around Marauders to clean that wreck. And I didn't see your name on it. Now you've done it. Eat fist. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's enough. This is a family establishment. You want to make a mess? You make it outside. Get him, Lex. But this was personal, Lex. It's a question of salvage. That wreck was going to make me a fortune. You get a lot of tavern squabbles around here? Oh, it's the same fight every day. Five years we've been at this, and we still can't agree on how to properly tag salvage. Now you two listen. This is my place. While you're in the Sprat Shack, you'll sit quietly, or I'll forbid you to come here at all. Is that understood? Fair's fair. I'll have a stout. And we'll settle this later on our own terms. Ah, it's no good to leave a fight unresolved. If I don't do something, these two are going to be at each other's throats. I could intervene if you'd like. You'd do that for me? Of course. What are friends for? It's kind of what I do for everyone. I appreciate it all the same. You'll be paid for your time and expertise, of course. Freddy, Trixie, go on and make your case to the generous stranger. I'll start, seeing as I'm the one who's been most wronged in this equation. State your names for the tavern. Oh, very formal. <laughs> Freddy the Scab, freelancer for sublight salvage and shipping. Same as my father before me. Junkyard Trixie, 
Also a salvage freelancer. Though, I've been at it longer than Freddy. So, uh, just up the road and due east of here, there's a shipwreck lodged in the mountainside, right? I staked my claim on that wreck. Then I wandered in for a drink. An hour later, Trixie swaggers in bragging about her salvage. Ugh, the nerve of some people. How did you mark the claim? I climbed on top of it and called out in my loudest voice. Finders keepers! <laughs> Is that legal, Lex? I don't know about legal, but it's legit by sublight standards. Assuming anyone was around to hear it, which we can't know for sure. Someone must have heard me. They just ain't brave enough to step forward and admit it. Mm, your case isn't winning me over so far, Freddy. What if I were to sweeten the deal? Say the salvage is mine, and I'll give you a share of the finder's fee. Bullshit. That ain't fair. Bribe the, bribe the, bribing the judge. Interesting. I rule in Trixie's favor. Uh, give me y your story and I'll decide what's fair. When I found the shipwreck, there were no salvage mark. See, the whole area was teeming with bloodthirsty marauders. So I snuck around and added my tag. Clear as day so no drunken idiots could claim the salvage out from under me, Freddy. For the record, when I heard the marauders coming, I left. Trixie must have set her mark down after me. Drum your fingers thoughtfully. Quit leading the prosecution, Hullhead. Anyway, that's my story, sir. Mm hmm. What mark did you leave? I drew an X in the dirt with my toe. Couldn't the mar marauders have walked over it by now? With the wind blown it away? Wouldn't surprise me in the least, but that doesn't mean it ain't mine. In all my years, I've never heard a more contentious argument. I don't envy your shoulders for bearing the weight of responsibility. You've heard it from them both. So, who gets the salvage? Would there be wind on an asteroid? Like, I'm, I, I don't know. Like, we're in a bubble, right? Like an atmospheric bubble sort of thing. Would that... Would there be wind? I don't know. Actually... I know outside the bubble there shouldn't be any wind, right? Because there's no atmosphere. Hmm. I don't think it matters, though, for this. Uh, these idiots don't know how to tag salvage, so I rule in no one's favor. That ain't no kind of fair. He ain't even from around here, Lex. Here's a six-pack on the house, plus your fee. Maybe now we'll finally get some peace around here for a change. Glad to be as, uh, does this happen often? A little too often, if you ask me. But that's the sublight way. Anything worth doing is worth fighting over. Glad to be of service. Come and chat if you're ever feeling thirsty. Yep. Thanks for. That's my captain. Very diplomatic, Captain. Though so fighting would be preferable to another conversation such as that. I like the look of that armor. I was wearing that for a while. By a while, I mean like a couple minutes. <laughs> It's back here. Sorry? Back behind the bar? Yep, there's Lex. This might be the best bar we've uh, experienced so far in the game. It's probably all stealing. We're not going to steal anything from her. Okay, let's head upstairs. Or what's in here? Kitchen? Yeah. Alright, up to the second floor. So Lucky's place. You, uh, think the folks here like strangers? Because some of them are looking at us like maybe not. Surprisingly, this place exhibits an aesthetically pleasing use of space. I agree, Max. And Parvati, don't don't worry. None of we could kill them all easily. They're no threat to us. Hey, Le Leonora. You don't look like one of the salvagers, no? Don't really seem like the type. 
You've got the look of someone who's traveled far to get here and whose journey is far from over. Makes you say that. Confidence. The scavengers around here, they're faking it. You're the real deal. I don't know if you're bound for the old ruins, but in case you are, can you look into something? I'd do it myself, but of course, the marauders would eat me alive. I bet you could stand your ground. Well, it depends on what you need. Um, looking for something out there. Been paying Sublight to help me, but they haven't made much progress. This something must be valuable. Sublight wouldn't turn over a rock unless there was salvage underneath it. Well put. My husband and I worked on Gorgon during the good times. Oh. Jerome was on maintenance duty. I cleaned out test tubes till they sparkled. Where's Jerome now? Nowhere good, that's for sure. In his final hours, Gorgon was a war zone. Violence broke out in the labs. The hills were full of marauders. You couldn't take a leisurely stroll without an armed escort. When the order came through to evacuate, non-essential personnel drew a lottery to see who would board the first wave of ships. Jerome won. I lost. As soon as I wasn't looking, Jerome switched our tickets and pushed me to the front of the line. I got to leave. Jerome stayed behind. Damn. I never saw him again. That was very noble of him. I scoff. He missed his chance to get out. That Jerome always chose the right thing, even when it got him killed. This place is greedy. Took my Jerome, and it would have taken me too. I just want one thing back. His old hip flask. I gave it to him the day we signed our marriage contract. And he carried it wherever he went. I know it's still here. What do you think happened to him? No point in denying it. He died on this rock. Likely torn apart by marauders. Unless... He took care of himself on his own terms. I don't like to imagine what happened. But I know I have to accept it. I come across anything. I'll keep an eye out for it. You'd really do that for me? Law. And I'll bet you're worth ten of those sublight brats. More like twenty. I don't have much, but if you help me, there's a little set aside for the occasion. Jerome used to drink with his buddies in a small kitchen opposite the maintenance shed. Might be a good place to check first. Let me ask you something. Yeah? Do you know Lucky? That old flirt? Yeah. I let him buy me a drink or two. He talked my ear off about exciting jobs he'd done. All lies, I'm sure. He fell asleep with his head on my shoulder. That man had baggage like you wouldn't believe. I didn't think anyone could be lonelier than me. Hmm. Was he depressed? He put on quite a front, but I think he was weary. Like he'd seen too much and had too little to show for it. I guess we were kindred spirits in a way. Did he mention anything about Gorgon? About the Gorgon research facility? He bragged about having the key to some sort of maintenance area in one of the old buildings. I never saw it, so I just assumed he was talking himself up. He also asked if I wanted to see something gross and slimy he kept in his room. But I declined. Politely. Gross and slimy. That's all. Thanks for your time. Sure thing. My condolences if you two are close. Tell me about your time on Gorgon. Oops. You find the lab coats kept quiet about the project, but the air was charged with excitement. You could feel it wherever you went. They wanted to change the world. A tenfold boost to worker productivity with no side effects? Who wouldn't salivate at the thought? I don't know what went wrong, but when the shit hit the fan, it sprayed everyone in its path, including me. Be seeing you. Okay, so everybody seems to think Lucky is dead, but all we see, all we've seen, is a severed arm. Why'd you want to meet here anyway? I thought we could have some fun in the ruins, salvaging like old times. I don't know, Carol. Salvage is a young man's game. I'm just a clerk now. Just a clerk? Come on, where's your sense of adventure? Yeah, come on, buddy. Oh, fine. At least buy me another round. Make it two. 
Gotta find my courage. Alright. So that's where we're gonna end the episode, guys. Uh, in the next episode, we'll head up to Lucky's room. We'll check that room, too. And we gotta find Roscoe, too. I think that was the other person she told us to to ask about or, at, or talk to to figure out what was going on here in Gorgon. But, uh, yeah, so far, this has been a great start for uh, this DLC. I'm really excited to see where it goes. But until the next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will catch you later.